I'm the Rank Q. Ramachiraka. In this brief video, I want to discuss self mastery, self mastery training, and things that get in the way of progress with self mastery. <clears throat> Here in my channel, I have called the main thrust of the material that I post here uh, as achievement training as well as personal evolution training. We could combine the two and call it self-mastery training. Now, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> excuse me again. While the instruction that I provide here in my channel as well as with one-on-one -on -one clients is all rather simple. Each little step is rather simple. The material is very difficult to persevere through. That is the nature of progress with self-mastery. At times, on the road to self-mastery, true self-mastery, it can seem that the whole world gets in the way. And really, what that whole world amounts to is a person's own mind getting in the way. Consider the mind of the person who has not attained self-mastery to be like a wild horse. Well, first, let's compare it with a royal Bengal tiger, a hungry royal Bengal tiger in the jungles of India. Rather untamable creature. Well, gaining self-mastery over the mind is even more difficult than taming a hungry, wild, royal Bengal tiger. All right. Enough about the tiger. Let's consider it again to be like a wild horse. We can find, let's say, a wild horse standing still somewhere. The minute that horse gets the idea that somebody wants to tame it, bring it under control, it starts to show its wildness. It balks in every possible way. And the more we try to get it under control, the more it balks. Until it seems like everything about that horse is <laughs> trying to make gaining control over it impossible. Until a fine line is crossed. At which time, that horse becomes subservient. And does pretty much whatever you want it to do. When you want it to do it. That's the way the mind works. When a person begins to engage in self-mastery training, true self-mastery training, and by that I mean two things. Bonafide self-mastery and mastery over one's mind. Mastery um, with the true self at the center of control. So true self-mastery means both things here. True self-mastery and true self-mastery, or mastery by the true self, rather than the false self, the false ego. All right. True self-mastery, as soon as the mind gets a hint <laughs> that somebody is out to, you know, get control over it, get willful control over it with the true self as command central. It balks. It'll come up with all kinds of things that lead a person away or that will tend to lead a person away from engaging in self-mastery training. True self-mastery training. 
It's like that wild horse. Once he gets a hint, that somebody's out to get control over it. It was doing okay until somebody came along and tried to get control over it. But, nonetheless, even though it was out there standing still, it was out of control from the point of view of somebody who aims to get control over it. All right. I want to give a few examples of how this works. How this, how the mind will get in the way. I'll use a few real examples. I recently had a client, a woman who was brought up without very much mental discipline training at all from her parents. She's 26 years old now and rather lost in life, has very little control over her own life. It's kind of a sad situation. And you know, after knowing me for a little while, hanging around with me for a little while, she realized that she needed some help. She needed some help getting control over her emotions, getting control over her mind, getting control over her life. So, her not having any drug addictions, her not having any severe mental illnesses, and her being of at least average intelligence, I determined that she could do the work. She was a likely candidate. And she was motivated, at least initially, you know, um, to... In, to, to Enlist my guidance. So I agreed. And I put her through a few, a few weeks of, of, of preliminary work just to determine, to, to, to help her to determine that she was really ready to do the work, that she could do the work, and that she was, you know, really ready to persevere through it. All right? Now, the logical starting point, in my opinion, the best, the most logical starting point for engaging in self-mastery training is um, a, a multi-phase um, is multi-phase work, multi-level work, a sequence of things to do with one's motives or goals with self-mastery. It's a logical starting point, and there are many reasons for that that go beyond the scope of this short video. So let's just take my word for it here. The logical starting point is to do work with one's motives for engaging in self-mastery. <clears throat> now, that can seem rather trite to a person getting started. It can also seem boring, and being six to eight weeks of work with just that, with one little step to take each week, with a little something to do every day, seven or eight basic assignments, each one stretched over a week, it's very simple stuff, it can seem boring, too long and drawn out. It can, it can appear in many ways to a person. Right? But I also explain why we're doing what we're doing. But I don't give full explanations. I mean, each little step of the way in bona fide self-mastery training, each little step involves many reasons for doing it, each step, and will have many effects. Many things are happening at once with each little step of the way. I explain some of them to a client, but not all of them. To go into a full description of why each step is the way it is. <clears throat> well, we get so involved, a person might as well go through a, my whole year's worth of training 
just to make a decision about whether they really want to get started. Because only then are they going to really understand how it all works and why it all is the way it is. So I give some descriptions, <clears throat> why things are the way they are and what's happening, enough so that a person is aware of why they're doing what they're doing to a, to a sufficient degree, I mean, sufficient enough for a person to go at it with some level of awareness of what they're doing and why they're doing it so that they can intentionally invoke into their thinking their understanding of why they're doing it because that helps it work. There's also, at the same time, a background of information that needs to be formed, a backdrop, a conceptual backdrop about self-mastery and its scope all of the different kinds of things that it involves that needs to kind of come into place right from the start so that there's a conceptual framework that, that gets the whole thing launched. Okay? A conceptual framework that uh, points of which, all the, all the main points of which we keep hitting on over and over as the training progresses. Now the instructions there are a few basic general instructions. They are, they are, follow all the instructions to the letter. Being able to do that, or forcing oneself to do that, is part of self-mastery. It's also very important for the program to work right. Follow the instructions to the letter. And when you are engaged in following the instructions, the second general rule is, Focus your attention as much as you possibly can. Focus it on what you're doing. And when reading any conceptual information that comes with it, just read it slowly and consider the meaning of each word. That's all. Okay. This young lady, who I'm referring to, who came to me for help, I gave her her first assignment. The assignment was this. Her first assignment after she made the firm decision, the final decision to do this, regardless of the difficulties. Follow the instructions to the left. The instruction was simple. For one week, carry around with you a pencil, not a pen, not a magic marker, a pencil, and a piece of paper. Not a tablet, not three by five cards, not a piece of slate, not a chalkboard, just a piece of paper. A pencil and a piece of paper. Wherever you go, for one week, have the pencil and the piece of paper with you. And any time you think of anything that you might think will come of gaining better control over your thoughts, over your body, over your emotions, anything that has to do with self-mastery, any, any result that you think might come of that, write it down. Anything that you Hope will come from it. Write it down. And anything that you're certain will come from it, like, for example, the ability to focus better, mentally focus better. That's part of the definition of self-mastery. So that's something that you know is going to happen if you engage in self-mastery training and follow the instructions to the letter. That's something you know is going to happen. Write it down. Just write any of these things down. And over a whole week's time, if you carry around that piece of paper and that pencil with you, life and your own mind are going to give you a gamut of things that you could write down. Just write them down. Just jot them down. Don't concern yourself with punctuation, proper spelling, writing neatly, 
writing one thing on top of you know in a list you can write them in different directions on the paper you can write them backwards incomplete sentences front and back doesn't matter just just scribble stuff down that was the assignment for the first week that was it at the end of the week I met with her and I said what'd you get what do you have on your piece of paper she didn't have the paper with her. I said, okay, well, what's written on it, wherever it is? She said, nothing. I couldn't think of anything. And I said, why not? She said, I don't know. But just three weeks before, when we first talked about this, she was explaining to me that she really needs this kind of help. And she was telling me things about her life that led to this whole decision she made and my offer to help her if she should like. And I mean, it was as though all of that talk had completely flown out the window. She couldn't think of anything. It was that wild horse at work. Her mind was balking at the whole thing. As soon as we were approaching her motives, her desires that had anything to do with getting that mind under the control, brought under willful control with her true self as command central. The mind balked. It shut down. She couldn't do it. She could not follow through with that first little instruction. Nothing came to mind. I had to tell her I can't help her. Sorry, can't help you. That was about two months ago. Met with her again today. Saw her today. She said she'd like to give it another try. And I explained to her what had really happened. And she said, yeah, that's what happened. That's exactly right. That's, that's how it worked. I mean, suddenly, I could not think of anything. My mind was in the way of it. It was like blocking my recognition of my very reasons for wanting to get it under control. And I said, yeah, that's the nature of the mind getting in the way of being brought under control. She wants to try again. And so I'm working with her again. We just started today. I gave her the same assignment. Same thing. And I told her, this time, if it happens again, then you have no excuse. You have no excuse. You can come to me next week with at least one thing written on that piece of paper, and this will be it. What I expect to get out of self-mastery training is that my mind will not get in the way of self-mastery training. So she has no excuse, because if the same thing happens this time, this week, as did back then, she has at least one thing to write down. And it has to do with her mind getting in the way. So she has no excuse now. And that came from experience. Her experience. Hopefully her mind will not completely shut off this time. Another client recently that I had for just a couple of weeks. This person said that he has been looking for someone to help him with self-mastery for a long time. In fact, it's now his, his life's priority. Uh, he has his own business. He's his own startup. And it's not the first time he's been involved in a startup. Um, but what's even more important to him is self-mastery. And he's been looking for a long time, you know, he's been 
following the, the guidance of, of various people who are kind of famous in the self-help industry, you know, people who have written books or produced audio cassettes and so forth. He has followed their instruction, but honestly, you know, he kind of wore out on their stuff. It wasn't all that helpful. And what he was, from what he knew about my material, uh, well, he ran into it here on YouTube, on my channel. And then after having some uh, email exchanges with me, found that my material was very powerful, superior to anything that he had come across before, and that he had been looking for uh, the help of somebody like me for quite some time, and he was very determined to follow through with this, and that he would do the very best that he could, and he assured me that this was his number one priority in life at this point. This was more important to him than, than uh, his being CEO of his business. <clears throat> and, and he was ready. And still, I put him through a little bit of rigmarole to really make sure he was ready. Um, he's an Ivy League graduate. And he said, of course I can follow instructions. To the latter. And I said, well, you're going to have to. That's exactly the way this has to work. You have to follow the instructions that I give you to the latter. Now, I told him another uh, general rule is when engaged in following the instructions to the letter, place your mental focus as, as, as clearly as possible, focus as much as possible, attend mentally to only the instruction that you're following when you're engaged in it. Focus your mind. Use it as an attention training thing right from the start. And follow the instruction to the letter. Engage only in this instruction when it comes to self-mastery training. Just follow the instruction and any conceptual material that I give you, just focus on reading it, deeply considering the meaning of each word as you read it. That's all. Just mentally attend to what you're doing and to only what I give you to do. No strain. No straining. All right. Agreed. The client agreed. Yeah, sounds simple. I can do that. Sure. So I gave him the same instruction that I gave the girl. Right away, this client, this young man, started asking me questions about outside material. Self-mastery related but not material that I had assigned or given by email. So my initial response was, well, one of the things that you told me you wanted help with, with respect to self-mastery, is to have better use of your power of will. Well, one mode of will operation is restraint. So at this point, practice restraint when it comes to outside material that has to do with self-mastery. The instruction I gave you indicated just pay attention to this instruction that I'm giving you. The material that I am giving you with respect to self-mastery and follow the instruction to the letter. That would include only attend to what I am giving you. Don't bring in outside material now. Don't confuse matters. Don't make this too complicated. Remember, no strain. So practice restraint with respect to that stuff. These questions that you are asking that you got from reading outside material at this point, we'll get to that kind of material later on. All in this due course. Let's try to keep this a sequential process. But the client, instead of saying, 
Oh, okay, I get it. This is part of self-mastery training. Instead of that, he responded, hey, I like to read other stuff. And so he asked a couple more questions, to which I responded. So then I took a cue from him. Oh, he wants to talk about other stuff. All right, so I'll answer these questions. So that, well, we'll bring that material into what we're doing. We'll make it part of the program. All right. But now this is going to start involving a lot of detail. A lot of more discussion than what I had planned. Well, let's see how this works. So, also, knowing that my program always involves more than one thing happening at a time, even with one simple instruction, there's more than one result going on at a time. It's working on more than one level at a time. And I need to work in as many levels as possible. I knew that in answering these questions and starting to bring in other conceptual information, I also need to develop a conceptual backdrop from which we're going to proceed. All right? A general picture. <clears throat> so I'll just start using the focus of some of these questions he's asking, all right, the answers to those things to do as, as, as a, as, as like core information around which to build this backdrop that I need to fill, build anyway, a conceptual backdrop, except this is going to be more the information than what I was actually going to give in the first place, because he's asking more questions than he needs to be, or than he should be. He was jumping outside the instruction that I gave, so now it's going to get a little more involved. So, <clears throat> I knew that all of this was going to take place now. So I addressed his questions, and I started giving him a lot of information, conceptual information. But the practical instruction that I had given him was simple. A piece of paper and a pencil, and just scribble stuff down. That was it. One week for just that. That's pretty easy. Should be. But during that week, I sent him a lot of emails with a lot of conceptual information. At first, he responded quite positively to it, saying, Oh my God, I never heard things explained so well. But it kept hitting him more and more and more. Now, I knew that at some point this was going to fry the left hemisphere of his brain. At that point, if he went about it following my instructions to the letter, part of those instructions is saying, no straining, then he would have refrained from straining over it. <laughs> but that didn't quite happen, because soon enough, I got an email saying, hey, you need to remember, you know, if you're going to be a teacher here, you need to remember that you know a lot more about this stuff than, than other people do. And, you know, this is too much. I can't assimilate all of this. I can't assimilate all of this, you know. You need to learn how to chunk your information. You know, like if you give a person ten digits in a row, all, all in a sequence to memorize, Upon hearing the first time, well, they can't do that. You need to break it into like three digits here and then three digits there, you know, little, little chunks. Then, then it's memorable, right? Well, <laughs> first of all, this gamut of information that I was piling on him now came about initially due to him asking questions that were outside the scope of the material that I had assigned him. All right. I also knew that I needed to build a backdrop of information. Okay, so it reached the point of overload for his conscious mind and for his left brain or the left hemisphere of his brain, which thinks only in linear, in a linear fashion. You know, logical little sequences, little chunks of information, and one thing that I had determined about him was that he is very left brain imbalanced. Um, and for self-mastery 
to occur, the right hemisphere of the brain needs to be brought into the picture very quickly, as well as um, getting the subconscious mind to start working on some of this stuff. So the point at which this material began to fry the left hemisphere of his brain due to the nature of the material and the ways that I was repeating key words, the way I was gearing this information up, this conceptual information, I was getting a subconscious mind involved intentionally, knowing that the material that I was talking about, I didn't expect him to assimilate at all because it's not the kind of thing that anybody can assimilate all at once, get the full relevance, the full meaning, the full import, make all the connections that are, you know, that need to be made all at once at the first reading. No. This requires, you know, to achieve all of that, it takes a long time. It takes work with the material. It takes practical experience with it. It takes many repetitions of the material. Repetitions using the same words, but in different contexts. Same context, but in slightly different words being used. Repetition from different levels of understanding, different levels of experience, different, different points in a person's own personal involvement and levels of achievement and self-mastery come around to the same points again and again but at new levels of understanding, new levels of application. This is how the material gets assimilated and mastered. All right? So I was taking advantage of this right up front just to plant the seeds into his subconscious mind so that when we actually get to this material in applications later on, it won't have been the first time he heard it. And I was gearing it up also to push his the right hemisphere of his brain into action by starting to be able to see whole pictures rather than just little tiny chunks in a linear fashion. Well, he complained. He wasn't following the instruction to the letter. The instruction was just no strain. Well, he was straining, apparently. Straining to assimilate it all at once with his left hemisphere. Instead of just relaxing into it and following another bit of the basic instruction. When I give you this material, this conceptual, just read it, focusing your mind on it, deeply considering the meaning of each word. That's all he had to do. If he did that, he would have met the requirement. There was no instruction to fully and completely assimilate it all and commit it all to memory. That was not part of the instruction. It was not in there at all. He was not following the instruction to the letter. These are things that the mind can do to turn a person away from self-mastery. Instead of taking advantage of the material as given and following the instructions to the letter, the mind will contrive all other manner of ways of going about it. Ways that will turn a person away. Like the wild horse, creating all manner of distractions. Kicking as wildly as possible and the reasons for wanting to get involved in self-mastery in the first place will become the reasons why a person drops out. All still pointing to why in the world a person could sure benefit from training in self-mastery. Here's another example. Same person. When I said, uh, the person pulled through the first week, although not very satisfactory. Kind of went ahead and did it his own way. All right. But still with, pretty much within the scope of, of what I asked him to do. The second week had to do then with... <clears throat> he came up with four, four reasons for engaging in self-mastery training. The unsatisfactory part was that those four reasons were pretty much just saying self-mastery in another way. They weren't really reasons for engaging in self-mastery. They were kind of like just 
saying self-mastery in four different ways. I knew there were deeper things. There had to be. So the week two instruction was to take each one of those four things, those four reasons, or those four descriptions of self-mastery, and break them down into little pieces. And remember, there are things that one wishes to get out of achieving mastery in those four things. Like one was, you know, greater control over thoughts, greater control over attention, over mental energy. Okay, that's part of self-mastery. You know, saying that that's my goal and that's as deep as it gets, it's kind of like saying I want to engage in self-mastery because I want to engage in self-mastery. There's no new information there. The question is, what is your reason for wanting to do that? What do you expect to get out of it? What do you want to use this for? What do you hope to get out of it? What do you know is going to come of it? What, what, what do you think is going to come of it? What do you suspect will come of it? What do you hope for? You know, what, why do you want greater control over your mind and your thoughts and your intention? Why? Really? Seriously? Why? What do you expect will come of it? What are you going to do once that happens? Once you get that? Once you obtain that? What are you going to do with it? There's got to be reasons. So week two was to dig further with a pencil and a piece of paper. Still just scribbling things down. Just take those four things that he came up with during the first week and delineate them. Break them down. Get more out of them. Unpack them, let's say. When I said, just a piece of paper and a pencil, he said, well, all right, um, I'll get four 3 by 5 cards. And I'll, I'll use one 3 by 5 for each of my four main things. You know, and I'll break them down on those 3 by 5 cards. I said, all right. Let's see where this goes. I'm dealing with somebody here who cannot follow simple instructions to the letter. The instructions were a piece of paper, not a piece of paper or some substitute for a piece of paper. No, the instructions were very simple. A pencil and a piece of paper. Now, that's a very left brain thing to take that simple instruction and turn it into, oh, uh, I'll use four 3 by 5 cards. We'll, we'll just catalog this thing right from the start. It's going off in some other direction. Going off in a direction that if left go very far into the whole self-mastery training program, it would start to be his training program, not mine. I might as well just step out of the picture at some point, real soon. That's a very left brain thing to do. Something I'm trying to balance out with some right brain activity. And for him, with his extreme left brain imbalance, it would be a small step in the right brain direction to just follow the instruction to the letter. Not three by five cards, multiple three by five cards, just a piece of paper. That's all. Just follow the instructions to the letter. So things were going really astray. Very soon. You see how this works? Self mastery training would involve, regardless of what his left brain is telling him, about chunking material into little bits and, and you know, three by five cards and, and bringing in a lot of outside information and asking a bunch of questions about it and not being able to practice restraint, but, but you know, just like uh, start to involve all kinds of outside chatter and then, and then have a problem with long and detailed answers to it instead of just not straining 
and following the instructions, like just read the material and pay attention to the meaning of each word. That's all. This was going to go, this was going off in a very interesting direction very soon, and it did not have to do with attending only to the material given and following the instructions to the letter, which is part of self-mastery training. Restraint, focus, and attention to the instructions. Being able to do that at this very simple early phase is part of self-mastery training. And this should be pretty easy, right? But you can see from the example I just gave how that the mind will contrive all sorts of ways to stay out of the control of your own will. It was only one week later that this client said, um, I'm going to have to postpone the last instruction you gave because... You know, right now, my life is so busy, I, I, I just, I, you know, I, I'll have to get back to you when things slow down. Well, I've heard that from almost every client I've ever had. At about the third to the sixth week into the training, I would say 80% of the people who drop out, drop out of, about then, they phase out, and about 80% of them... The reason why they do it is because they don't have time. They suddenly don't have time for this. But just three to six weeks earlier, they had time for it. In fact, I gave them a couple of weeks to think about it. I even gave them preliminary, just kind of like test, practice things to do to make sure that they could follow a set of instructions every day and to find out whether they actually had time in their lives for it. I even had somebody come to me once and say, I need help with time management. I'm not using my time wisely. I'm finding that I don't have enough time to get things done in the day. I need to manage my time better. Can you help me? So I say, yeah. All right. But you're going to have to put a little bit of time into implementing good time management procedures. And I'll teach you how to do this one little step at a time. And I'll be darned if the person about two or three weeks later doesn't come around to me and say, I'm going to have to, you know, just postpone this because I, I, I don't have time to do this. <laughs> and I say, yeah, I know. That, that's why you came to me for help with time management. <laughs> so, you either just keep doing this, follow the instructions here, and get the better time management, or <laughs> just let your time stay, you know, out of control. What you're telling me is that you need my help. And so, the reason why you need my help is the reason why you're going to, you know, not take it anymore. That's what it comes down to. It always works out that the reasons why a person is getting involved in self-mastery training become the reasons why they stop, which only indicates their need for self-mastery training. And these are the kinds of things that come up. So, this man I'm talking about, I said, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah go ahead and attend to what you need to attend to. Go ahead. I understand. Yep. Life's busy, all right? But I knew that what was happening is that his left brain, his, you know, his mind, as soon as we were starting to dig into the reasons why it should be brought under control, it was coming up with reasons why it's not going to. And it was already showing signs that it was balking at it right from the start, like I've explained. And now, it was a matter of time. Not enough time. 
Well, folks, is there ever going to be a better time? Is life ever going to slow down? No. When a person starts engaging in true self-mastery, at times it can seem like the whole world is working against it. But really, it's the mind at work. Coming up with every reason possible why it is not going to be brought under control of the will with the true self as command central. It's just going to refuse for a while. It's going to be like that, that wild horse. So I gave this gentleman about two weeks, and then I let him know I'm not waiting. There's no time like the present. Regardless of what's happening in your life, this is it. Your life isn't going to slow down for this. This is difficult work. Self-mastery involves sticking with this. That's part of self-mastery training. Getting your mind under control regardless. That in itself has to do with self-mastery. Following the instructions to the letter is another. And the instructions weren't that hard. Three by five cards when the instructions say a piece of paper. Come on, man. Saying that disinformation is coming too fast after bringing in outside information to discuss and then getting answers. Left brain chattering all over the right brain. Shutting out the right brain, not letting it get involved. Thinking that it all has to be consciously assimilated right from the start when part of the conceptual material I was giving was that what we're going to be doing is repeating this kind of information over and over. Apparently, the client not reading the material and deeply considering the meaning of each word, because that apparently was missed. Hence, the strain of the left hemisphere of the brain trying to assimilate and internalize the total depth of what he was reading at the moment. All that was required in the instruction was just read it and consider deeply consider the meaning of each word as you read it. That's it. Just the meaning of the words. That's all. No strain. All of the general instructions for the whole self-mastery training program were being broken right from the start. And this is somebody who definitely has the mental capacity to follow these instructions. This is the way the mind will screw a person out of true self-mastery. These are the ways. It will get in the way. It will get in the way. It will give all sorts of reasons to drop out, slip away, quit, It's all very predictable. Very few people actually follow the instructions to the letter and stick with it. Very few. Very few. It's the rare person indeed. These are some of the difficulties with self-mastery training, even though none of it is all that difficult. The mind itself is the difficult thing. That, bringing that under control, is what self-mastery is about. There's a logical sequence to follow. 
There's a way that it works best. And then, by the way, it's not exactly the same for every person. Which is why no set of audio tapes, no books bought from the self-help bookstore, and no set of YouTube videos can ever be totally sufficient, totally satisfactory, totally efficient and effective for anybody. One-on-one -on -one work is required for total effectiveness in a thorough road to self-mastery. I will provide that help one-on-one. -on -one. If you contact me, if you message me here and say, hey, I would like that, then we can discuss it. We can negotiate it. I will determine whether I would like to have you as a client, and you can determine whether you would like to have me as your guide, and then we will discuss the terms. And then we could proceed. That's the only way that it's really going to work for you. Meanwhile, there's a lot of material here in my YouTube channel, but if you go about following it, um, even if you'd be one of those really rare people who follows it as given, and the instruction is given here in my channel that my self-mastery or my, my peak achievement and personal evolution series of, of videos is meant to be taken in sequence with every instruction followed to the letter. Very few people do that. I can tell by looking at my statistics here how many people look at what videos and how long they look at each one. People take things out of sequence. They cherry pick. But even if a person does follow the instruction just as given, following the rules, just as given. Still, it's a series of videos which cannot be completely effective and completely efficient for any one person because it's a kind of like made to be a one-size-fits-all thing which is not completely pragmatic. It's not completely realistic. Because each person is different. Each person has his own starting points. Things need to be pretty much geared up for each individual uh, in a custom manner. Same basic material, same basic rules apply, but with variations for each individual. That's what works. That's why such material all through history has been provided by a personal teacher. Well, like I said, if you want, contact me. We can do this one-on-one. -on -one. It'll, take, it'll take some discussion to get started. I might decide, no, you're not going to be, uh, I'm not going to, I'm not going to do this with you. Or you might decide, well, no, 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 I, I don't want to be his, you know, I don't, I don't want him to guide me through this. Or, but if we both decide favorably, then we have terms to discuss because, you know, it, it's not going to come for free. There's a cost. And uh, we'll decide what that's going to be. All right. <clears throat> there. These are some of the difficulties, problems, with self-mastery progress. And the problems all have to do with one's own mind, which, of course, is what we're trying to get brought under control. Your own control. Under the control of the power of your own will with your true self as command central. That's the goal. Well, that's one way to state it, anyway. One way to state it. Uh, and um, the problems arise from one's own mind. Those are where the problems are. And again, just to repeat, 
that's why there's such a thing as self-mastery training. All right. I'm Tharanki Ramachiraka. Be well.